So when we ask whether the universe is infinite or finite, we have to be really careful about the question we're asking. Because what Einstein has taught us is that what we really should think about is space-time. Space and time are one thing. And we can divide them up in different ways. Now, what it turns out to happen is that if you divide space and time up in one way, it could be that space is infinite. But if you divide the very same space-time up in a different way, it's finite. That sounds in really incredible. It, it is, and it, it leads to one of the most amazing things, which is that you can take some region, say, you know, here it is, I'm going to create something here, and this is going to turn into an, a universe that is infinite in space, that has infinite volume at each time. Now, that seems just totally ludicrous, right? That it's got finite volume, how is it going to turn into something with infinite volume? And, but the decomposing space-time into space and time is the key. So the way it, it works in some sense is that suppose I take some nugget of stuff and it starts growing and I let it grow for an infinite amount of time, okay? Then you, you'll agree that this thing has grown into something with infinite space-time volume. Well, it goes on forever, but if it starts finite, it, it is always some number. Whatever number you want, it'll eventually get there and exceed it. But at any given time, it's still finite. That's what you might think. But <laughs> if you think about it this way, so if I take this thing, then a moment later, maybe it's this big. A moment right, later, right, it's right, this right, big. Right, so right. at each time, it has a finite size, yeah, yeah, just right, as right. you said. Right. But that's according to when I say um, this moment, a moment later, yes, a moment yes, later. That's a definition yes. of uh, what a moment is Fair. and what's existing at one time. Now, I can take that same thing and slice and dice it into space and time in a slightly different way, such that when you look at that, at every moment, it looks like it is spatially infinite. The region you're allowed to look at is only the region inside this, this blob. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. So you confine yourself to inside the blob. Right. But you can cut it up in such a way that inside that blob, it looks like an infinite universe. And that cut is as legitimate as the, the, the intuitive one that we come to? Even more. Oh. So <laughs> once you go inside the blob, when you cut it that way that I described, it actually looks uniform. It looks homogeneous, in fact, just like the Big Bang cosmology, which is homogeneous, right. that is uniform, and the same in every direction. And this is just our local universe. That's right. So outside this blob, there could be other stuff. Right. And so our universe that we're in can be infinite, cut this way, and yet there still can be infinite numbers of other universes within which each one would be infinite. Exactly. Is that right? That's right. Well, I sounded like I knew what I was talking about, <laughs> but I certainly don't. It, but it's true. What it looks like, if you're in one of these universes and you say, how do I get out? How do I see you know, other stuff? It generally looks like you had to travel back in time because in some sense, to go out of the, the blob that you're in, you have to go through earlier and earlier oh. instances, or, or travel faster than light is another way to think about well, it. Well, because if you have m more than one universe, each of which is infinite in, in, in space, it would seem like they had to overlap. They don't have to overlap, but that is permissible because it, c it can be the case if they start far enough apart, they're in the external description in which they look finite, they're expanding towards each other. So they're both growing at this high rate so you can think of the edges of them moving towards each other, but the intervening space is expanding even faster. So they're uh, moving towards each other, but the space is going faster, and so but, they never meet. But looked at from, a th uh, from outside, they both look finite. They both look finite. But inside? They both look infinite. Yeah, and, and fundamentally, why is that the case? It's because the question of whether it's finite or infinite is one that depends on your definition of time. And you're free to make any definition you like, it's mind-boggling, I know. And, <laughs> and it, well, the first time I learned this, I just couldn't believe it, because it, it, you, you think certain things are just philosophically impossible. Yeah, it just seems like a logical contradiction. Right, and then you realize that physics has taught you some way to actually do it nonetheless. Our sense of what is possible and impossible is based on those ideas about how space and time are our intuitively. Our ordinary perceptions. Right, and those aren't correct. Those aren't correct.